In 1885, Great Britain made Bechuanaland, modern-day Botswana, a protectorate of the British Empire. This happened at the height of the scramble for control of African territory by European powers, that it intensified after the Berlin Conference of 1884, where the continent had effectively been divided between European powers with imperial ambitions. Bechuanaland was strategically placed between the German colony of South West Africa and the Boer Transvaal territory to the east. With the Germans and Boers representing a potentially serious rivalry to British interests, Britain hoped that by controlling Bechuanaland, these two unfriendly territories would be prevented from uniting and inhibiting British dominance of southern and eastern Africa. Bechuanaland enjoyed a relatively peaceful existence right into the mid-20th century. By the 1950s, the winds of change were blowing at gale force across British territories in Africa, and demands for independence were growing. But who would lead a newly independent Botswana? Born in 1921, Seretsi Kama was the grandson of Kama III, the king who had applied to make Bechuanaland a British protectorate. With his royal and political lineage, Seretsi Kama was seemingly an ideally placed candidate to take the reins of the new country. In the 1940s, however, an international romance rocked the foundations of regimes across continents and saw Kama banished thousands of miles from his home country, powerless to influence politics in any way. While he was in London, Seretsi Kama fell in love with a white Englishwoman, a women's auxiliary air force ambulance driver called Ruth. Their marriage in 1948 threw Britain and the whole of southern Africa into political turmoil. Interracial marriages were banned under the apartheid government in South Africa, and every Machiavellian machination imaginable was pitted against Kama and his wife to prevent them from becoming involved with the politics of Botswana. Eventually, however, times changed, Botswana gained independence, and Kama was elected president in 1965. Recently, I asked Sir Alan Hazelhurst MP, Chairman of the UK branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, for his thoughts on Botswana's progress since independence. Thinking more specifically about Botswana, um, in, in what ways do you think that that country has benefited from embracing some of the core values of the Commonwealth? Well, I think it largely has. I mean, I think it, it, it probably stands uh, above many of its neighbours within the continent of Africa. But, but there's a lot of hope in Botswana, isn't there? I mean, it's it's had a great economic history in, in modern times. It's it's sort of grown faster than many of the other. Well, it's quite a respectable uh, increase in uh, GDP. There's yeah. no doubt about and that. Stable governments through and democracy. Stable, stable government through democracy. Although there's not been any actual change of government. I think this mm. is always one of the maturing features of the democracy, mm. as to at which point you uh, somebody completely different, as it were, mm. has a, 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 a bloodless uh, democratic change of power. Rather than dynastic rule, sort of. Yes, I, I think that uh, those who have uh, led the campaign for independence in many of the um, countries of Africa and, and, and beyond uh, cling on, as it were, because they feel they are owed uh, respect uh, from their peoples for, because they were the ones who fought the hardest and most prominently for independence. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily uh, lead to forever. Uh, to, to a healthy democratic structure. But stability is very important. Stability is important for the people, stability is important for foreign investment, and the confidence which people have in the systems uh, which apply in any country. And I think Botswana uh, has uh, a very respectable record in that respect.